Transcendent being lives here? Ooh. If someone lives here, then why is it so chilly? Hmm. I'm asking myself the same question. How strange. I'm quite sure that this is the location my mother wrote about, but surely. Hmm. I'm starting to have second thoughts. But since we're here, I still think we should go inside and explore in full. Yeah, makes sense. Who knows? Maybe there's a surprise waiting in there for us. So, um, what does the notebook say exactly? Let me think. A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight. Dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. In the blink of an eye, I'm standing on the path that leads to her house. Sounds like a fairy tale. So your mom would do a little ritual, and just like that, Tsubaki would come to meet her? I have a feeling that it could be some sort of code. Let's get a little closer before coming to any conclusions. Maybe it'll give us... Strange. There's nothing in here. Let's keep looking around. Let's recap what the notebook says. Maybe it'll give us a hint. A crane brings one fresh flower in its beak to decorate my hair, 
while a white rabbit sews a hemline from four rays of moonlight, dressed appropriately, I face eastward and call out Tsubaki's name seven times. In the blink of an eye, I'm standing on the path that leads to her house. this? Huh. Looks like a book. It seems to be another notebook. Could it be Tsubaki's notebook? Let's step back outside now. The atmosphere here is different than I'd imagined. Somehow, it makes me a little reluctant to open the notebook. Paimon knows what you mean. Reading in low light is really bad for your eyes. <sighs> Come on, let's get back outside. <sighs> Here will do just fine. read the notebook without distraction. Seems whatever's written in there must be pretty major after all. But, um, based on her expression, probably not a treasure map. Hmm, what could it be? <sighs> Traveler, Paimon, sorry to keep you waiting so long. No worries, it wasn't long at all. You're a very fast reader. Yes, I have. I think I ought to share the truth of this notebook with you both. Even though the contents are completely different than what I was expecting. Different how? You mean it wasn't a fox envoy who wrote this? Not a fox envoy, no. It turns out that Tsubaki's real identity is my mother herself. Huh? Surprised? Me too. But that's what it says at the very beginning of the notebook. <clears throat> Tsubaki and I are the same person, and yet we are different. When I become Tsubaki, I stop being Kami Sato Kayo and become the most ordinary woman in the world. What follows in these pages is the ordinary, everyday life of a regular person. Nothing more, nothing less. This notebook is, for the most part, a collection of my mother's musings, both private and trivial. All of the things we thought were about Tsubaki were in fact about my mother herself. So, that means 
that the kimono design and the international dishes... ...are things that my mother wished to try, yes. I'm sure this all sounds utterly bizarre to you, but to me at least, my mother's behavior is completely understandable. Or to put it another way, I... I actually have another side to myself as well. I was at a loss for words when I started reading the contents of the notebook. It almost felt like... Like someone had looked inside my mind, examined my thoughts, and then written them all down on paper. Ayaka... From the moment my mother married my father, she became the mother of the Kamisato household. And with that came all sorts of duties. At the same time, the prestige of the Yashiro Commission brought its own share of responsibility. On top of that, every action she ever took was seen as representing the Kamisato clan. People were always watching her. Under such circumstances, she never had much time to do the things she really wanted to do. After my father passed away, Ayato and I took over responsibility for the affairs of the clan. We ran into all sorts of difficulties during that time. I'm not sure if people outside the clan could ever imagine what it was like. Every time I found myself up against a difficult issue, I'd ask myself, did my mother go through this too? What would she have done in this situation? Maybe it's because it had been so long since I last saw her, but... Somehow, all that was left of her in my mind was the sight of her that inspired awe and commanded respect. But my image of her was incorrect. When I read this notebook, I realized she was just like me. Underneath whatever position she may have held, she was just an ordinary person. She liked pretty kimonos, she wanted to try food from different places, she yearned to see sights she'd never seen before. Maybe this all sounds immature to you, but I feel just the same way. I want to live life not as Kamisato Ayaka, but as an ordinary woman. Mother wrote that she'd always wanted to go to a local Inazuman festival. She said that sometimes, on a clear night, if you looked out from our house, you could see lights off in the distance. I've seen those lights too. It looks so lively with so many people. And it's so brightly lit it makes the whole sky glow. Of course, sometimes it does make me a bit anxious from a public order perspective. But for someone of my position to just show up at a festival with no warning, it could be considered improper etiquette. Especially in my parents' generation, when the Yashiro Commission didn't have a particularly close relationship with the populace. Even if no one stopped us, the idea of the Yashiro Commission going out into the crowd, it'd certainly draw some strange looks. People would probably start thinking there was trouble afoot. Mother said that she didn't want to put people on edge. She wanted everyone to enjoy the fun and freedom of the festival. She didn't want to disturb them, and didn't have much free time anyway, so she never went. Not even once. Ah, so the kimono design... That must have been the outfit she planned on wearing if she ever did go to a festival, right? That's right. And sometimes, festivals sell international food. She wanted to try that, too. I hope this isn't a disrespectful thing to say, but... I never knew my mother was so in touch with her inner child. <laughs> well, that's not disrespectful at all. Paimon thinks your mom was the best of both. A big softie on the inside, and a big sense of responsibility on the outside. Hmm. Without knowing it, I've ended up fulfilling several of my mother's wishes already. <sighs> But going to a festival is the one thing that I cannot do for her. Perhaps this is one thing that can simply never be. I understand. Thank you. I think I realize something now. Mother and I are so similar in so many ways. The things she faced are things that I too will go on to face. She chose to place her unfulfilled wishes onto the identity of Tsubaki. 
As for me, I've already decided. Oh, so you decided on an alter ego too? No, um, I don't plan to do anything like that. I think... I think I will set myself a new goal. To live each day without regrets. So, um, traveler, I... <clears throat> <sighs> Deep breaths, Ayaka. Deep breaths. <sighs> Would you be at all interested in checking out an Inazuman festival? Paimon's been dying to go ever since we saw that poster! Paimon would love to go with you, Ayaka! Hey, come on, don't make fun! It's just because I used to have the same concerns my mother did. But now, I don't think I need to worry about it so much. I'm going to be true to myself and fulfill the wish that my mother and I shared. I know that you of all people can understand me going my own way on this. So, let's do this, you and me. Let's go to a festival together. Paimon wants to come! Festivals here have loads of tasty snacks too, right? Oh, and fun and games! Great. Thanks, you guys. If we head over now, we should still make it in time. Oh, good point. Today is the last day, right? What are we waiting for? Let's go!